Yes, yeah, Stuart Highway has been uh, obviously an area of concern for us over the last week. Uh, fortunately, there's been a, uh, a good flow of trucks come through over the last, uh, well, during the day today. Seven o'clock this morning, uh, we've had reports back of uh, 25 trucks going across the, uh, the water crossing from the south and about another 10 coming down from the north over, over the last couple of hours. I saw one truck in our footage that was stuck in flood waters. Is that a today thing or has that happened in the past few days? That, that's a historical truck that's been stuck out there for a period of time. The, uh, the road, as we're aware, has been closed for, for a significant period of time now. And uh, we did, in the earlier days, have some issues with, uh, with trucks and other transport trying to pass the, go past the roadblocks. So, uh, changed to allow the road to reopen and, uh, you know, why, how's, how's it helping everyone? Certainly, the, uh, the water down there has significantly subsided. Um, recent reports in the last, uh, to around lunchtime on uh, Sunday, are reporting that uh, areas of, uh, of the crest of the road that are now uh, just as uh, 100 mil underwater. Um, certainly some islands showing up across the, the top there, but we're also having, uh, with the wind that is happening on Sunday, we're actually having some water pushed back onto the road just with the wind factor and pushing back up the channel. So it's been monitored on an hour by hour basis. Uh, but the roads up there for the heavy vehicles are open from 0700 on Sunday morning through to 7pm tonight as a cut-off, uh, so as we can ensure that uh, the roads are uh, escorted through in a, in a very managed and controlled way. Is there any risk the road could be closed again with another rain event or more wind? Fortunately, the, uh, the weather in the immediate future is looking very promising and both the Department of, of Infrastructure and Transport and, uh, and the police are monitoring the road up there very actively, particularly with some, some pitting and potholing that is, uh, has occurred through the floods, and that'll be assessed on a daily basis. And your assessments at the moment, how much damage is there to roads all around that region and, and the railway tracks? I mean, I think it was like 18 spots on the railways damaged. Is it, have you been told any time yeah. that's going to get back to normal? Yeah, what we've been told at this, this stage is uh, 17th, 18th of February, uh, the, the rail transport is, is looking to be uh, reconsidered to be reopened. That north-south and, uh, and east-west route that is cut in rail at the moment is causing significant um, supply line issues for multiple states and that is very much a priority of, uh, of ARTC as well as uh, the State Emergency Service to get, uh, get those train services open. And with a complicating factor of still some of the roads cut by, uh, by water, it is uh, a very challenging area to get around and we've been very heavily reliant on airdrops. And uh, very thankful to our, our partners in SA Health, uh, RFDS, and, and some of the private companies that are assisting us uh, facilitate uh, food drops into some of the remote communities. Um, one of the, the upsides of having uh, the two major emergencies declared is uh, the working hand in glove with SA Health to uh, to utilise some of the same aircraft to take food into the areas as, uh, as nursing staff and medical staff are being taken into the same areas and, uh, and being returned. Are there more flights, relief flights today? Uh, there are ongoing flights being organised over the, the next couple of days but they are reducing significantly now as the, uh, the, the transport industry is able to open up through those areas and uh, we're anticipating that winding back significantly. Yeah, okay. And, and how important has it been for those communities in these flood affected regions that Stuart Highway is now reopened? It, it's critical. Stuart Highway is, uh, is the, the lifeblood of the north through a lot of those areas and it, uh, it gets food through to places such as Cooper Pedy which are then a, a hub that uh, sort of feed the, the food out to the different spokes in that, uh, that northern area and it, uh, it was very pleasing to hear that uh, the road trains going past Cooper Pedy this morning and the feedback we received from the locals up there. Yeah, really important to them? Exceptionally important to them. Uh, it gives them uh, not only the, the food up there available, but also the peace of mind that they're no longer cut off from, uh, from the other parts of the state that, uh, that they support and we support them. Yeah, you're doing incredible work. So do you, do you have volunteers still working? How many are you still working at the moment? Yeah, from the volunteer perspective, we've got uh, some volunteers still doing some work up in the Cooper Pedy area and also the Roxby Downs area over the next day. We'll be supporting and assisting with some of the logistics around the flights. And uh, we've still got our state control centre for the SES open here uh, in the metropolitan area and uh, we'll be continuing our transition through to recovery over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. What are some of the other major roads that need to reopen to get some food again? Uh, the Stewart Highway has been the, the main main road, uh, Streslecki and other tracks are, are going through assessment and opening uh, over the next day. 
and uh, the Department of or the DIT uh, websites will be the best point of uh, contact to, to work out the up-to-date information on uh, on those road conditions and what's open and what's not at this point in time. Yeah, definitely. And then you're still looking at Tuesday for other, other four-wheel drives to be able to go through? My understanding is that's being assessed on a daily basis, but, uh, but I, are, I do believe they are looking at uh, early to mid next week for some of those high clearance vehicles to get through and uh, for more general traffic uh, towards the end of the week is, is what's been released. Really, it is again in, in regard to those partnerships. We've been in daily contact with our, with our peer agencies up in the north of the state and the, uh, the no Northern Zone Emergency Support Team. Um, the, the work that's been going up there to liaise directly back into Adelaide has been, been fantastic and, uh, and the support to get uh, all of the agencies, including Defence, uh, the health agencies and the emergency services agencies to work together has been has been quite monumental. The damage that is coming out of this event is uh, is significant with the road and infrastructure, the individual damage to properties, uh, to pastoral lands, to road networks, to electricity networks and communication networks is is significant um, and it is a, a a huge part of the state with some 45 local government areas that have been affected and uh, as we move into the recovery space there is a uh, a significant amount of work, uh, cost and infrastructure that uh, will be looked at in depth very shortly. Do you know how many homes have been damaged, how many properties? Uh, it's very, very hard to assess through the, the areas that are out there. Um, as an example, we've got some 60 odd local government areas in South Australia, 45 of which have been affected, and uh, some of these local government and or associated incorporated bodies that take up the, the vast majority of the state, particularly to the north. So there is a, a significant amount of properties and, and leases and uh, and such like affected as... Yeah, definitely. And that, that uh, England down road itself, you've got that mm -hmm. inland sea. Yes. From your assessment, how much water is there? How, how much space is that going to bring? Uh, it's a significant amount of space. I haven't got the, the square meterage on it at the moment, but it's, uh, it's enough to put many hundreds of metres of the highway underwater. And the channel that's been dug out um, over the last couple of days to help flow that water away has been been highly successful in, in lowering that water but again with the wind putting the water back up the channel at the moment uh, it's coming down slowly. So it's complicated? It's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a bit of a task. What else? Uh, you've done the channel are there any other things you're doing to drain that water? Uh, it's, a, it's a very flat basin so uh, other than the channel uh, the natural evaporation and, and the wind that is coming through up there is actually a, a big advantage because it does aid in, uh, aid in the evaporation very quickly so it's drying out, the water is lowering, and uh, and all of the uh, the tactics that we're utilising to try and get that road open uh, are going in the right direction at the moment. Yeah, great. Where, where's that trench flowing to? Uh, it's going out into the desert, quite and simply. It's just going to the next bit of low land, uh, many kilometres away. It's a, it's a trench of, of multiple kilometres to, to get the water away from that area. Great. The, uh, no predictions of another rain event or anything like that? No, at the moment uh, we're looking okay as far as the weather, touch wood, on a, uh, on a short to medium term basis.